I'm I'm the the solidification of a Lone Star. We in the Lone Star State. That includes Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Corpus Christi, Austin, San Antonio, whatever the hell you want it in, in Texas is considered to be the Lone Star State. Mm -hmm. I represent that to the fullest. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. So, let me ask you this, man. So, so you get, you know, you got to understand you trying to come up on a career, but you ain't from Houston. But when I seen you, it, I thought you was from Houston when I first he seen you. Houston. No, he didn't. It wasn't that he repped it. It's just he was with a group that was in Houston that was out of Memphis. Look like what I'm, I'm after. I'm after the, the history. I'm, I'm, I'm the the solidification of a lone star. We in the Lone Star State. That includes Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Corpus Christi, Austin, San Antonio, whatever the hell you want it in, in Texas is considered to be the Lone Star State. Mm -hmm. I represent that to the fullest. Got it. I'm a Lone Star. Okay, so how did you end up, you know, I know last time you told the story, you said you almost ended up on rap a lot. Tell me that story. Well, at that time, just moving, trying to move my little demo tape and decided to, shit. You went take, over there. Take a trip up to Rapala Studios. I'm trying to, Mr. Lee told me he remembered that. It was, it was brief, you know what I'm talking about? It wasn't like it was no. I believe it was Mr. Lee. Big told me meeting that. or nothing. It was just me, just. A couple of people around. Young, knowing where niggas was hanging out at, seeing if I can get in somewhere and talk to somebody, let somebody hear my little, you know what I'm talking about? It wasn't like I met with Jay Prince there and none of that. But Jay Prince has been at like my in stores where I was doing my record signings and he showed love. Came. So yeah, I always supported and loved everybody from Texas. They're all artists. I've always supported everybody out of Texas. But when you went to, to make that move, um, I think you told me that you might have said he was yeah, he wasn't there that day, but what what caused you not to make that you know to be persistent about going back to there? Because I was waiting too long, I was waiting too long, and then this just I seen the little drama. I think Bushwick came up there, and and his little kid was some had was blood bleeding from his nose. It was something going on with him, and mm. I'm just watching everything, and just the niggas is just I just wasn't I didn't I didn't fit in at that moment. Okay, you didn't you know fit in. Didn't at, get the right vibes. At that particular, so me, I'm the type of guy, like if I, when I came in here earlier, I'm a very, uh, what they call, uh, my spirit is very, very uh, discerning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My discernment is like. Real. And extremely, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not really, I'm not probably going to hang around long enough to see why. Okay. I'm just going to obey that. And that's so crazy yeah. that being a young kid, you, you knew, knew how to knew tune like into that. that. Because, you know, kids are usually, just like you said, you were a hothead. And, you know, they don't listen to stuff like that. So that's really rare that you were able to discern, discern and listen yeah. and move accordingly. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, you know, the prodigal son, I don't know how old he was, but he said he thought to himself, how many hired servants do my father got? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times something, your inner self may say something that speaks to you in a way to where you have to move on. it. I get it. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.